Hello, you guys. It's cold. Welcome back to Let's Deal With It. I had to come on and thoroughly finish all the points that the Lord gave me, all the things he was communicating to me. Okay, he said, you got to go back to the thief on the cross. The whole point of talking about the thief on the point, on the point, <laughs> on the cross, is that he sincerely recognized his sins and knew the one that could, can, that could forgive him and take him to heaven. He, he recognized the Holy Son of God. And this is a perfect example when he said, if we hide our sins, we will not prosper eternally. See, everything is money to this prosperity folks and teachers and preachers and apostles. But when Jesus said, if we hide our sins, we will not prosper. And that's spiritual. That's eternally with the Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit. Okay. And this is why he said he resists the proud. He resists the proud. So the thief on the left, I forget the twisted and sick things he said. I, I, I just can't recall them right now. I was able to tune in that God can save you in your dying breath. Oh, wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the scripture that came to me is, in this last hour, second and minutes, those of you who have engaged in this, don't let the devil cold cock you. Don't let him have you. Jesus is stronger than any sin. His holy blood, his holy word, and his holy name, this ain't nothing. I want you to have the wherewithal, the sincerity and the humility to come on clean with the Lord. Amen. And watch you make it in by the skin of your tail. You're going to go up in this heart. So, yes, you are. Yes, you are. The Bible say some will be saved by the skin of their tail. What y'all think that is? <laughs> God is, he is awesome. So I wanted to go back to the thief on the cross. The man had, we don't know if he never heard of him, but more than likely, I don't think so. But the key understanding that the Lord want us to have, I'll forgive who I will forgive and show mercy on whom I will show mercy. So the man on the right side, he had a change of heart and a change of mind. And he recognized Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, for who he is and he was in that moment and is. Yeah, he knew he was the son of God. He knew he was God. He said, in your paradise, remember me when you come. And that's, that's, <laughs> this is why if you go to hell, and even before you get there, if you get left behind, you emphatically chose to. Yes, you did. Oh, yes. Brother Anthony is bringing it. Listen, thank you, Holy Spirit. See how the Holy Spirit is? He helps us. He is our help. God bless you, Brother Anthony. When I say you is a perfect example, and perfect means mature. It takes someone that got the fear of God, number one to admit when they've made a terrible mistake. Terrible. And we all done made them one way or another. So watch it. Watch it, y'all. Let us watch ourselves. But uh, Brother Anthony, that's why God done spit on him. The man is blazing, coming out with two guns blazing in the Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? Yeah, that's all you got to do is come clean with God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he said, that's why God said, if you confess your sins, it is God who is faithful and just, not just to forgive us, but to cleanse our conscience from all dead works, from all sins. Look at God. Now, that thing is moving through the entire body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Yeah. Yeah. The VMAC. Oh my. Well, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Please. <laughs> anyway, you guys, Lord, 
the blood of Jesus. So, uh, you guys, this is serious business. Uh, is you all humble yourself while there's yet a little time? Can you imagine? Thank you, Holy Spirit. The regret of missing God because I was arrogant and prideful. Oh, it's not worth it. And thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, Marsha, there are those who take themselves more serious than they take me serious. That's why they in, they're damn, they're in big trouble. Because the Lord said, we is nothing. And apart from him, we can do nothing. He even say, bless God, if you don't stay connected to, to the vine, we is just branches. We'll just dry up and wither and be thrown into the fire to be burned. See, if y'all read y'all word, you would know that. Oh, my God. So, thank you, Holy Spirit. The enemy won't steal this. You say, how is it that so many Christians fell for that big lie? Big lie. You know why they made idols? Yes, he gave me that this morning. He said, they depended on their voices more than mine. So I was drowned out, Marsha. I told them not to do it, but the voice of fear and the voice of pastors, their pastors and their bishops and their apostles told them to do it. And instead of them knowing me, the lover of their soul, Oh, they chose to listen to their idol. And this is why the Lord tells us to repent of our idols. People think an idol can just be howling and hugging and getting naked in front of a tree or having gems and lighting incense. And, well, some people, yeah, amen. Uh, clothes, their vanity, uh, TV, technology, a husband's wife's children, debit cards, credit cards, food, gossiping. There's many idols that can be in our life, you all, that can have a stronger voice than the voice of our maker. We're all guilty of it in one way or another. Everybody is guilty of it. So thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why it happened. The Bible says don't put your trust in the arm of flesh. Don't do that. Because they is just like us flesh and blood yes and he said flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of god you need to be you need you know who y'all should listen to spirit filled people like myself yeah i got dogged and talked to like a dog i actually have heard dogs be talked to better than how some folks have looked at me and still do and talked to me but that's okay because i told a uh, uh individual when I go up, all bets going to be off on me. I know that I know I'm going up. The Bible says you can be certain. So, I always like to say, folks ain't got no hell to put me in and no heaven to keep me out of. So you all, I just want to make sure, because he said, no, you got to go back. Okay, this is what God called us to be. Love, light, and salt. And you know, when you salty, which means that you don't compromise and you have the fear of God, that's when you find out if folks is true saints. Yes. This is when you know the saints from the ain'ts. Because it's the Christians that's getting offended at the truth. Ain't that something? That's very scary. That's very scary. We are called to be the love of God to people even our enemies. I didn't say you got to like. It didn't say to like folks when they nasty, unkind, mean-spirited, gossiping, backbiting, hateful, jealous people. It don't say that. Matter of fact, it say, watch them dogs. He say, don't bother them. That mean don't give people the gift. Let me tell you what y'all are to give people for this Christmas, even though I'm not, yeah. Give them the gift of your absence. <laughs> yes, come out. Come out, come out wherever you are, where people know, you know they hate you. You know, oh y'all, we I'm keep going, Marsha. And I got that from another brother. I can't call his name, but I know God used him to liberate my soul. 
give folks when when folks don't love your presence give them the absence of your presence yes you don't hate them y'all pray for them because they're in a lot of trouble earnestly sincerely pray for their souls amen that's true love yes okay so i talked about brother anthony okay lord the thief on the top on the cross Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me show y'all how it don't matter what hour you come into the kingdom of God. If you was one of the first, the middle, or at the end. There is a story in Matthew. I'm going to go to it, should the Lord tarry, about the workers that came in at the different hours to work for him. Excuse me. This is a powerful... Oh, Brother Anthony, I hope you jump on this and let's look at this together. Let's josh this. That's what the Jews and they, the scribes would do. That's what they need to do in church instead of thinking the pastor knows everything because he don't. Most of them don't know nothing of the Spirit. They joshed. You, oh. Anyway, there is a story in Matthew about the workers. You know, folks that say there ain't no work. Oh, yes, I told you we on double duty. That's the work of the ministry, and that is the work of the soul, the character, and your personality. Oh, yes, it is. We is co-laborers with the Lord. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So, there was the workers who came in at the beginning of the shift, and God, the work, the, the um, boss, which is Jesus, paid them handsomely. And then there was those who came at, at the midway of the shift. Paid them the same wages. Most of you going to catch this. The, the ones who were spirit filled. The ones who got an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And then there was those who came in at the end of the shift. Now the folks that came in at the beginning. I don't know if the middle shift got a, got to fill in some type of way. They may have. But I know the first ones got to fill in some type of way. That the good man, that's it, the good man. That's what, yes, God is good, Jesus is good. And Jesus had enough humility to say, there is none good but my Father in heaven. No, Y'all don't see this in pastors and preachers. No, they good. Keep going, Marsha. So, the workers all came to the good man. And that's the Lord, you guys. And he paid them all the same. And you know the wage is, what the wage is? Eternal life. It's the crown of righteousness. Yeah, see, that's the Holy Spirit will download that to you. So you had the first shifters get mad at the last shifters because I'm here to tell you, should he tarry just a little while longer, he could tarry out of a couple months, or three, he could. Some of y'all that's just coming in, oh, you gonna be highly anointed. Yes, you are, because he's doing a quick work. And instead of us who may have been in the first shift or the middle getting mad at them, we should be rejoicing. We should be encouraging them, helping them in any way that we can. See, God is watching the first shifters. Yeah, won't help people do their ministry better wherever they can sharpen them. Marsha, keep going. Anyway, I say anyway, come on in. Because he's still handing out crowns of righteousness. Come on in, brothers and sisters. Come on in. The water is fine. It's, it's fine. So, um, thank you, Lord. See, this thing is so powerful. Yeah, he's called the good man. The good man. You know, it's like the prodigal son, his, his brother, got mad when the father, see there, said, cook the fattest calf had a ring, a signature ring and sandals because he was glad to see his prodigal son come on. And I got a prodigal son and I want you guys to know I heard from my son Thomas two weeks ago. Help me. So thank you for all that's been praying. Keep praying. But I'm glad he not did. Anyway, you all these pastors, they're in a lot of trouble. When I tell you, they really are. When a pastor don't preach about sin and conviction, righteousness and living holy, but every Sunday 
Every Wednesday, he takes time out to speak about money and not the condition of your heart, mind, and soul. He is a charlatan. He is a hireling. Do you all hear me? Yeah, the Lord want me to talk about that. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what he told me to talk about, the altar. When I was a little girl, the pastors that I knew at that time, they would say, let everybody come to the altar of God. Let us confess our sins before the Lord. And people who may have been partying on Saturday and Friday, who may have been cutting up and doing wrong, smoking, excuse me, you all, drinking, cussing, they would get convicted and they would run to that altar, having sex to all of them things. The Lord showed me this morning, I said, the Holy Ghost said, if the pastors aren't calling you to the altar of repentance, that's because they ain't got an altar. <laughs> ain't that heavy? Y'all know that's real, and y'all know that's right, and you know it's the truth. And you say, how can you? Blind guides leading the blind. Deceiving and being deceived. That's what happened here. 501c3. 501c3. That's when they became utterly blinded. You all get out. Get out. Find your altar at home and set your house in order because the master builder is coming for his masterpieces. Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God, he coming, he coming. Let us make sure our houses is in order because he coming. I'm not gonna be in trouble with the Lord, ooh, no. So I do believe I've touched everything now and I can go on to the scriptures. I'm just making sure you guys Thank you. See that? The enemy don't want us to remember that. So do you know the Bible talks about those who once walked in the ways of God and they knew truth? They did, you all. He said, and when they when they uh, become seduced by the riches and the uh, better lifestyles and glamour, Hollywood, that's what happened. They, happened. they got bewitched, bamboozled. The Lord say what they have will be taken from them. And you can tell the way they didn't even see this. They was already blind guides. Clouds with no water. Dumb dark, dumb dogs with no bark. No salt. God knows no love and no light. He calls those who are in the beloved his love, his light, and his salt. Don't you apologize for near one of them. Do you hear me? Don't you be no butt kick kisser and no brown noser. Don't you be a people pleaser. Please the Lord. You better please God because he's the one that matters. He say who get in and who don't. I would be on the Lord's side. <laughs> Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? Let him come over here. Let's make sure we on the Lord's side. Not your pastor. Not your bishop. Not your apostle. Not your mama. Not your daddy. Your sister or your brother. You better be of the Father and about his business because Jesus said them is his family, the ones that are doing the will and the work of his Father. Yes. And if I only had one subscriber, I would be a teacher of one. You know why? Because when one soul is truly converted, the entire heaven rejoices. This is why I don't care about your opinion about me. No, I care about what God care about me and say about me. If everybody unsubscribed right now and one faithful soul stayed attentive to the spirit of God in me, I'm going to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. And you know what he say when he was washing the disciples' feet? See how the Holy Spirit is flowing? He he said, he said, because he knew they was all wondering who, they was jocking, who going to be the greatest, who going to be the master of things and of God. None of them. I said, not none. And if anybody was the greatest, it was John and Paul. But the greatest of all greatest is Jesus. And that's what we really should understand. 
But I want to tell you what Jesus said to all of them. He who desires to be great in the kingdom of God is a servant to all. So you lukewarm, once saved, always saved Christians. Yes, you don't serve nobody but yourself. So if Jesus, the one you say is your Lord and Savior, if he said in order to be great in his eyes, you must be a servant to all. Yeah, this is the time for us to locate ourselves. You know God got a book of works. Angels attend every church service and they looking at us every day. There's books in the library of God. Yes, the book of life. Make sure your name is not blotted out of the book of life. And I want you guys to know I was very persecuted maybe two summers ago. I was literally trying to warn people what it said in the word of God. And I thank God I wasn't alone because I was about to be devoured. I was trying to tell them there has never been a once saved, always saved. God calls us to be a separated and holy and righteous people, to be honest about our sins and the weights that easily beset us. I said, the Bible says he can blot our names out. So if your name has been blotted out, it had to be in there first. And I want y'all to know somebody literally, I, I want to say they jumped. That's how violent and beastly it was that they came after me. And I said, are you, you want to fight me? You guys, I couldn't believe it, but I wasn't shocked. No, I already knew. But I didn't know they were they would go that far. And you talking about be spirit and people? Oh, yes, been. But now it's more evident. But the Lord had a witness. He had my sister Christina, because I had invited her, and she had gone to two or three of them. And she said, oh, my God, she's telling you the truth. That That's true. It's in the Bible. And they wouldn't even let me get to the scripture to show them in the book of Revelation, and it's in a couple of other places, at least one that I know of, that it says, lease your name, be blotted out, the book of life. Yes, you all. And that individual literally verbally attacked me, and I believe with all my fiber, they wanted to hurt me. And I thank God because I had such a rage as a child from being beat and abused called B-I-T-C-H's, you high yellow wench, you all, oh my. And I used to fight you guys, I did. And they know that, they know that. But I had no temptation to hurt her. No temptation to fight. And I still stay cordial and kind to that individual. And that's what my test was. Don't have to like people, and God knows not to trust them. No, but it's okay. So I need you guys to be praying for me. I'm not afraid. I'm just tired. But the Lord is teaching me to rejoice when you are slandered, when you are persecuted for the gospel. You all, I was preaching, teaching them the gospel. Why? If you once saved, always saved, is all of these leaders going to hell's fire? Why did he say they're going to be held at a greater accountability if they're always saved? Y'all think about that, sweethearts. They themselves have said their punishment is already reserved. They probably believe they're saved too. Of course they do. That's what Satan does to us all if we don't keep ourselves in the love of God. And you know what Jesus said the love of God is to him? obeying them they're not obedient they're dumb dogs with no bark they they are they are deceivers they are devils yes you are a devil with someone who's a deceiver any of us can be a devil if we are deceiving people from the path of righteousness from the narrow path that leads to eternal life that's a devil honey if ever i seen a devil i love you all Please keep my son Thomas, my daughter Sarah, and my boy Juju in your prayers. And you all keep me in your prayers. 
I hope you guys know I love you. And I can't wait till we're all together. Because I'll never feel rejected, abandoned again in my life. I've never gone through so many places of being rejected from churches to work environments. You all, I'm not going to say that. But if it had not been for my mind staying on Jesus, the harm that people have caused me, I could be in a serious manic depression with the weight of my son, finances, but God, but God, I love you all. God bless and keep you until we see him face to face. God bless you.